Good afternoon, thank you. Well, I must admit that I felt very honored having the Royal Drums introducing my talk. Then I was disappointed because I saw the video. But anyway, I I'm going to tell you a few things about breast cancer. I'll give you a few data, I'll tell you where we stand, and what we can do to further improve and reduce our losses due to this malignant tumor. Breast cancer is the most uh, frequent malignant tumor in uh, women worldwide. We estimate a number of over 1.2 million new cases worldwide, and considering Greece, uh, the estimated number is about 5,000 new cases every year, which is translated to one more diagnosis of breast cancer every working hour in our country. However, the good news is that despite the increased incidence, mortality due to breast cancer is continuously decreasing. We are doing very good, and we can do better by focusing our efforts towards prevention, early detection and optimizing treatment, or in other words, giving the right treatment to a certain woman with her specific type of breast cancer. Talking about prevention, we know that there are some risk factors which can uh, increase the possibility of developing a breast cancer. Some of those cannot be changed. I mean, you can't change your age, your sex, or your genetics. However, there are some others which could be modified. If you want to reduce the possibility of developing a breast cancer, you could refrain from smoking, avoid excess alcohol drinking, avoid using hormones, chemicals. On the other hand, you can be protected by exercising and avoid being overweight. Nevertheless, currently, the most important thing is early diagnosis. Early diagnosis is the best way of defense we have against breast cancer. And how can we do that? By having a, a high quality mammogram, all women over the age of 40 should have a mammogram every one to two years, and at the same time, have a breast uh, clinical examination by a breast specialist. And mind you that advantages of early diagnosis are really very, very important. We can control locally the disease very easily, and most importantly, avoid mastectomies. We can give mild systemic treatments, meaning less side effects, and a lot of times we can reach up to 100% cure, especially in non-invasive cancers or tiny carcinomas found on mammography. Finally, optimal treatment. Okay, we are doing good. We continuously have new medicine, new drugs, novel treatments, and the last few years we can even have tests which are based in gene profiling of the tumors, like Oncotype, DX, Mammogram, or PAM50. And those tests not only tell us the possibility of a woman to develop metastasis in the following 10 years since diagnosis, but they can also help us in treatment decisions. For example, they can tell us if chemotherapy is better for this woman or uh, hormonal therapy is just okay and we can avoid uh, chemotherapy. Okay, this is where we stand and the progress we have made up to date. But the world is changing, and we can still do more things towards better treatment for certain types of tumors and certain groups of our population. And I'm going to use as an example the results we had uh, from a recent research, because that research was focused on a special group of women, elderly women, who develop breast cancer. Why are they are important? I'm, I'm going to explain to you very soon. But we did that because we also had the opportunity in our trial, we included women only postmenopausal up to the age of 96 years old, which is highly uh, uncommon in uh, medical research. 
And I'm going to give you the reasons. We know that uh, the world population is aging. It is estimated that by 1000, 2021, almost 10% of the world population will be at uh, over the age of 65 years old. Taking into account that breast cancer incidence increases with increasing age, it is expected that the increasing life expectancy will enlarge the absolute number of older women who will develop breast cancer. However, we have a problem with this population. There is lack of evidence-based medicine. And this is due to the fact that older patients are underrepresented in breast cancer clinical trials. We don't want them in our trials. I mean, they take a lot of medicine, so we can't reach any conclusion. Um, they dare to die of something else, so we lose our data, so we don't want them in our trials. However, there are not all elderly women the same. There are elderly women who are very, very fit, some of those can be very aggressive, not forgetting to mention the teenagers. <laughs> what shall we rule our future at the moment? And pretty soon they will reach the cutoff point of the United Nations definition of elderly, uh, elderly people who is 60 years or, uh, old. Be precise, they are 58 and 59, respectively. Okay, so we wanted to test the hypothesis in uh, our trial. Yes, elderly women often suffer from comorbidities, and certainly, obviously, they have shorter life expectancy. And it is true, we observed that in a lot of uh, other trials, that elderly women. Uh, with breast cancer are most likely to die from something else and not uh, from their breast cancer. So our question was, is it true the general perception we have that prognosis of elderly women with breast cancer is good or this is a false interpretation of the facts I just mentioned? We use the data of the team trial. This is a trial uh, our group performed the last, for the last 10 years, and there we included almost 10,000 postmenopausal women up to the age of 96, as I already told you, uh, enrolled in uh, seven European countries, Japan and the United States of America. We did a lot of analysis in this trial, and among other, we studied the age-specific competing mortality in breast cancer patients. In other words, the risk of dying of something else for your breast cancer. That was later published, and I'm going to show you just a couple of slides of what we found. We divided our population according to their age. And if you look at your right-hand side on the graph, considering uh, women who had the diagnosis by the age of 75, you will see that we did reconfirm what we already knew that elderly women most often die of something else. But then, to test our hypothesis, we focused on those women who actually die because of their breast cancer. We did a lot of analysis. This is a busy slide, it's not to, to be explained, but I'm only going to tell you a couple of things. Finally, we used the fine and gray uh, statistical model, which is a model assessing the risk of mortality due to breast cancer and due to another case, taking into account the risk of reaching uh, the other end point. Just to, to make it simple, if you have an old woman with breast cancer and she dies uh, in a car accident, she is no longer at risk of dying of breast cancer. And this is what we found. Look at your right hand side. Yes, if you have a diagnosis of breast cancer at the age of 75, then you have seven times more chances to die of something else than not of your breast cancer. But look at the numbers in the middle column. If you focus on the deaths due to breast cancer, you can see that elderly women have 50% more possibilities to die of their breast cancer 
comparing to younger ones. And then we try to find the rationale behind this, because our hypothesis was proved to be true. We did a lot of analysis, and without finding any differences, and when we came down to treatment, we realized that to the elderly population, we give them less radiotherapy, and most importantly, among women with the same disease characteristics, they only receive 5% chemotherapy if they are 75 or older, comparing to 50% of younger people. So the obvious conclusion was that we under-treat our elderly, and elderly breast cancer patients risk treatment discrimination just because they are elderly. So if we want to improve also uh, our disease outcome for this population, we shouldn't pay attention only to chronological age. We have to consider the disease factors, but at the same time to see how fit they are, our patients, how many comorbidities they have, and then combine all together, find the right treatment, because elderly people deserve the right treatment like young people. So in conclusion, we are doing very good with breast cancer, but we can still reduce our losses by prevention to avoid, early diagnosis to cure, and optimal treatment to transform breast cancer, which was known up to yesterday as a lethal disease, to transforming to a chronic disease. Thank you.